Thank you for joining us today in Jennifer Schaust and Associates complimentary webinar series. We're coming to you live from Washington, D.C. today. This year on Fridays, we're covering procurement playbooks. We take a deep dive into doing business with the federal agencies and departments with our panelists. On Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern, we cover the FAR supplements or procurement regulations for the agencies and departments. Fridays, we cover the business development and marketing aspects of the same agency and departments. The full schedule, sign up links, and recordings are on our website. And here's just a look at what we've covered so far. And we're actually almost done with this series. As you can see, we'll be winding down the series on August 24th with the Department of Veterans Affairs. And then here's just a quick look at our Friday schedule. On Fridays, we cover the same agency or department in our playbook series. Um, like I said, so again, full schedule um, and recordings on our website under the playbook tab. And please note, this fall, we will be starting a new webinar series covering subcontracting opportunities in the different government departments. These webinars will be on Wednesdays at 12 p.m. Eastern, and they begin September 7th with the Department of Agriculture. You can find the registration links and full schedule on our website under the subcontracting tab. And we also have sponsorship opportunities available. And now we would like to take a quick moment to thank our sponsors who help make this webinar series possible. First, we'd like to thank the Virginia PTAC. Virginia PTAC is based out of GMU in Fairfax and offers free one-on-one -on -one counseling to firms in Virginia on federal, state, and local procurement topics. Online resources and group trainings are free with no restriction on business location. If you're interested in learning more, please use the links provided to explore what PTACs can offer. Next, we'd like to thank the Federal Business Council. The FBC creates and manages virtual and in-person meetings and events to connect industry and government thought leaders, product providers, and solutions with government programs that use them. The FBC works with a variety of federal agencies to connect government and industry in the form of in-person and virtual conferences, training events, policy dialogue, and outreach. Over the last 40 plus years, FBC has become a comprehensive resource for connecting industry and the federal government. Next, we'd like to thank Dastin. Dastin is an IT and cloud solutions provider working with corporations, the military and government agencies to lower their costs, increase scalability, improve operational efficiency, and meet compliance regulations using targeted cloud-based solutions. Dastin is a certified partner of Oracle NetSuite, a premier tier Google Cloud partner, and certified partner of Cisco, Virtue, AODocs, and Authenticate. For more information about Dastin services or to schedule a complimentary consultation, please email Joe Alston or visit the Dastin website. Next, we'd like to thank C3. C3 IS IT develops tailor-made technology solutions that increase efficiency, bolster productivity, and improve business processes. C3 is the leading provider of managed IT services, as well as compliant cybersecurity solutions for federal contractors. C3 works with defense contractors to achieve and maintain CMMC 2.0, DFARS, and NIST 800-171. Contact C3 to learn more about the CMMC 2.0 readiness program. The contact information is on your screen. Next, we'd like to thank RLJ Financial, Founded in 2008, RLJ Financial Consultants is a customer-focused, quality-driven, minority and locally-owned provider of commercial insurance brokerage services. Their services are designed to maximize your return on investment in managing the risk to your business. Call Roderick today at 202-832-1417 for a free consultation and insurance quote. And lastly, we'd like to thank the PubK Group. The PubK Group publishes news and insights for government contractors, agencies, and council. Every day, PubK delivers news on bid protests, contract disputes, new laws and regulations, cybersecurity requirements, false claims act activity, and developments in mergers and acquisitions in the GovCon community. 
In daily news briefs and in-depth conversations in podcasts and webinars, PubK leverages its deep bench of government contract experts to keep you up to date on fast-changing government rules and expectations. And every January, PubK presents its week-long annual review featuring more than 50 GovCon experts across a dozen panels, recapping the year's top developments. Participation and CLEs are free to subscribers. Visit PubK online at www.pubkgroup.com. All right, so today we will be covering doing business with the Office of Personnel Management. Um, so let's meet our panelists for today. We want to thank uh, Ms. Archisa Meehan from FedMind for being with us as always. It, it's great to have you with us. Hi, it's nice to be here. And today um, we don't have a representative from OPM. So um, with that, Archisa, I'll let you take it away. Just let me know when you're ready for the next. Yep, uh, perfect. Yeah, let's go to the next slide. And then one after that. So good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Archisha Meehan, and I am the director uh, for the federal go-to-market at GovSpend. Uh, thank you, Jennifer, uh, for including me in the playbook series. And I am really glad to be here for today's session on um, the office of uh, OPM. Sorry. It's Friday. Um, so a little bit about FedMine. Uh, we are a federal intelligence, uh, federal market intelligence company that basically integrates the various 18 data sets into one easy to use platform. Um, we are now part of uh, GovSpend, which is the largest provider of, um, of information, of data and purchase orders within the state, local and education markets. So our combined companies now provide both the best of the federal and the SLED data. Uh, next slide. Uh, and the one after that. So a little bit about uh, OPM, Office of Personnel Management. Um, you know, and for those of you who've heard me before, you know that I always feel that we need to understand the mission of an and the vision of an agency as also their strategic plans and priorities as that truly does get reflected in their spending in the past spending as also what they expect to do in the future so for opm uh, the vision really is empowering excellence in government through great people uh, and the mission is to lead and serve the federal government in enterprise human resource management by delivering policies and services to achieve a trusted, effective civilian workforce. Um, so truly this agency is um, the chief human resource agency and personnel policy manager. And, it, and, it, and they believe and they do help the federal workforce achieve their aspirations as they serve the American people. Uh, you know, things that fall under OPM include uh, administering the retirement benefits, the health care insurance programs, uh, you know, the merit-based and inclusive hiring within the civil service, as also providing a secure employment process. Um, and a little bit of history, uh, they actually began with the Civil Service Act that was signed in 1883, which established the Civil Service Commission. That commission actually was led by Teddy Roosevelt and laid the foundations for um, an impartial, impartial and professional civil service that was really based on the merit principle. Um, in 1870, sorry, in 1978, this commission was reorganized into three organizations. Um, the Office of Personnel Management, the Merit Systems Protection Board, and the Federal Labor Relations Authority. And each of, this, each of these organizations took over a portion of the Civil Service Commission uh, responsibility. And of course, the OPM is responsible for the personnel management of the civil service of the government. So that's a little bit of the history, which is always interesting to know. Um, so next slide. So a little bit about their strategic plan. Uh, they, you know, they want to make sure that they position the federal government as a model employer, transform the uh, the organizational capacity and capability, 
create a human-centered customer experience and provide innovative and data-driven solutions. So this in brief is their strategic plan. Um, if you go on their website, they actually have a very thorough document that I would really encourage um, you to read and, and understand specifically if the OPM is the, your focused agency. So um, let's go to the next slide. So uh, looking at the spend year over year, um, you know, in 2000, there is a drop between um, 2019 to 2020. And I believe this had to do with some reorganization that happened uh, <clears throat> at OPM. Um, the National Background Investigative Bureau no longer is part, and it had a pretty large portion of the spend. Um, come FY20, that, that really has moved away from this contracting office uh, from this OPM. So I wanted to show you a little bit of that. Um, so next slide. Um, in FY21, uh, OPM spent, um, contracted $472 million in contracts to 824 companies. Identity Theft Guard Solutions, Powertrain, IBM, Research Management Consultants, Deloitte are all your top companies. Um, next slide. Uh, in terms of looking at your PSC codes and NAICS codes, um, you know, which we always want to make sure we're looking at and, you know, using um, our keywords to even get a better result set of the NAICS and PSC codes that I use within the agency. But this is just looking at overall. Uh, we have a computer related human resource and executive search related expenses as also um, credit bureau related uh, expenses so the the next codes that you actually see are very much in line with the strategic plan and the mission and vision of the agency so always good to see that uh, next slide in terms of looking at you know contracts that were awarded as small business as compared to other than small business um you know you have a um, small business account for nearly 64 percent of the contracts that were awarded which is amazing um next slide in looking at your top 10 prime contractors uh powertrain search management consultants bearing gov smart these are all companies that won contracts as small business. Um, the agency has used the 8A sole source and 8A completed vehicles or programs pretty well, um, as also HubZone and SDVOSB and women-owned small business set aside. So um, always good to see that. Um, anytime we see negative numbers, it does tell us that there were some de-obligations that might have occurred even pertaining to previous years. So always keep that in mind. Uh, next slide. Looking further at the NAICS codes, um, you know, when we're looking just at small business spend, you do see um, quite a lot of computer related expenses, human resources, and a small percent of uh, that's going to facility support services. Um, but when you look at the PSC codes for uh, contracts that were awarded as small business, you do see that education training uh, is a large portion of the spend. So again, keep that in mind. Um, you know, we of course want to be focused on our NAICS codes with our keywords, but also pay attention to the PSC codes that are being used. So next slide. Um, when we look at um, OPM and um, look at the COVID contract, uh, FY20 saw more than $12 million awarded to 23 companies. 80-odd um, percent of the contracts were awarded as small business with the primary NAICS codes of computer-related and janitorial service codes. Um, FY21 definitely saw the spend drop substantially with contracts being awarded under the janitorial services code to two companies. Next slide, please. Sorry about that. Um, again, uh, when we look at agencies and the spend, uh, we do want to also pay attention on um, the various um, 
categories, uh, looking at the categories and understanding further how contracts are awarded to small versus other than small businesses is really helpful to us. Um, I find this is a great way to, to get quick looks at understanding uh, agency spend uh, at the top level. And no surprises here, but human capital, IT, professional services are all your top um, uh, categories with, you could see in terms of um, how much is going to small business, human capital, IT, facilities, constructions, and security protection. Large majority of the contracts do get awarded as small businesses, which really has led to the really good performance of uh, small versus other than small business. So next slide. Further, you know, if, if we look at categories, we definitely want to also pay attention to the vehicles that are used. Um, again, keep using your, your keywords and fine tuning searches, but these are just the top vehicles that are used at OPM. NASA, HCATS2, OASIS, 8 stars all are your top um, vehicles year over year. So, and again, it does tie in with the type of purchasing that they do. So next slide. Um, looking at subcontracts, um, 9 million was reported as subcontract awards to six companies by five prime contractors. Again, NAICS codes are in your computer and human resource, resources related NAICS codes. So, um, you know, keep an attend. Yep, next slide. And looking at your top primes, um, you've got Bering, Northrop, Accenture, Khaki, Federal Management Partners uh, that have worked and given work to uh, business operational concepts, resource consulting services, C. Evans Consulting, uh, to name a few. Um, again, this is just looking at the spend at the top level. Um, obviously, I'm always going to recommend putting in keywords, uh, focusing on the type of work you do, of course, using the various iterations that could be used throughout the federal government, uh, and you know, coming up with uh, and doing these searches based on the type of work that you do, because the results will change. Um, so next slide. So we paid, we had a quick look at, you know, how the spend is, what are the various, how, how's the agency spending, whether we're looking at NAICS codes and PSC codes or small and other than small business. But now let's start looking at what is the future opportunity out there? Um, opportunities always can be based on the new initiatives uh, that the agency is um, undertaking, which is really dependent on their strategic plan, their mission, and the vision. So it's really important to know what's happening. Um, and then looking at the budget documents gets to be super helpful. And then also looking at the contracts that are expiring that could possibly be recompeted, especially you know when we look at services and things like that. The other thing I'm always going to tell you, especially if you are in, you know, uh, technologies get obsolete. So sometimes it might be helpful to look at something, you know, if your technology or your services is going to replace something that was used five years ago, go back in time and do searches to understand, you know, what are the possible technology changes that you bring to the table that's going to result in savings. Uh, or effectiveness within the federal government. So pay attention and look at that type of information too. And again, as always, use your keywords, use your NAICS codes, use your PSC codes. Uh, where do you get this, op this information? Of course, the budget and program information on the website. Um, look at the pre-solicitations and sources sort notices that get released in SAM.gov. Even if you're on any of the vehicles, many times you'll see RFIs. I mean, just request for information, make sure you respond to those. This is the agency's way of doing market research and we want to make sure that we respond as, um, as needed. Um, and then of course, let's look at creating some expiring contract searches based on what you do, uh, fine tune these searches. If you just you know do work within specific geographical areas or if you're on a specific IDIQ or vehicle, 
use all of these as filters to come up with the best um, data set for you to work off. So let's look at some things that are happening within OPM. Uh, next slide. Um, looking at the Exhibit 53s, uh, which is, you know, all the top um, programs that the agency has funded, has budget allocated, and is tracking. Um, you could see the CIO IT modernization, retirement benefit services, um, trust fund modernization, the CBIS, are all programs that the agency is looking at So uh, and has funded. So would highly recommend if you are in the IT industry to keep your eyes on the uh, Exhibit 53s and the next slide and the 300s. The 300s I really like, they give you a lot of good information, um, also tell you how the CIOs rated that specific program. And many times you will find your program manager's information within these Exhibit 300s. Um, so next slide. So let's look at some expiring contracts. Um, you know, this is sorted based on contract numbers. So you might find a company occurs more than once, but that's because that their contract might be expiring. Um, we have a little bit more than $43 million that were awarded as other than small business that are expiring in the next 12 months. Um, next slide. Looking at the NAICS codes, um, again, they do tie in with what we saw for the agency spend in terms of human resource and executive search NAICS codes, followed by computers and facility support and janitorial services. Um, in terms of place of performance, uh, DC, Pennsylvania, Illinois, Virginia, and Georgia are your top five states. Uh, so keep an, attention, keep an eye on that too, especially if you're looking at uh, work that does need to be performed on site. Um, next slide. Um, in terms of small business contracts, 206 million are expiring in the next 12 months. Um, looking at companies, we did see some of these companies already when we were looking at the top small businesses, uh, Powertrain, Cyber Media, GovSmart, uh, PBG Consulting, MindBurner, all the top companies with the top contracts that are expiring. Um, next slide. And looking at the set of sites that they might have used, um, 8A Sole Source, Hub Zone, um, and Small Business set of sites are what the OPM has used in terms of these small business contracts that are expiring. Um, so obviously, if you are a new 8A, you know, do searches with the 8A expiration date that will give you further. Uh, comp uh, opportunities and, and the ability to look at possible teaming and joint venturing, uh, uh, you know, uh, type of relationships. In terms of NAICS codes, again, we do see a lot more of the computer-related NAICS code with a little bit of uh, human resource and executive search as also software publishing and facility support. Um, so next slide. Uh, looking at the open opportunities, and I did this, I want to say, a couple of days ago. Uh, so you could see that there are three opportunities that are open within OPM, and I would highly recommend that you know you, if you, if this is an agency that you're focused on, to pay attention and see what it is that you could possibly do there. Um, and with that, I think uh, I come to the end of my slides. Thank you. And again, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to me either uh, by email or LinkedIn. Thank you so much, Archisa, for such a great overview. Um, now we're just going to um, go through some quick links because we um, we don't have an OPM representative today. Um, however, here's just some links to the um, main website for OPM as well as their small business office, and then the acquisition forecast and the SBA scorecard. And remember, you can find all of these on our website as well, um, in addition to the slides when we send them out after today's webinar. So thank you again to Ms. Archisa Meehan for being with us um, and for participating in our panel today. Make sure that you join us next week. Um, we'll be going through 
uh, NASA next week. The FAR supplement is on Wednesday at 12 p.m. and the procurement playbook will be on Friday. And again, you can find the recording and slides um, from this webinar about 24 hours after the webinar, though usually even sooner. Have a great weekend and this concludes the webinar.